my name is Julius Caesar. I am a barber of 17 plus years. I'm Sophie Staygold. For the last 10 years, I've been able to travel the world and share my experiences. I'm Miguel, also known as the Nomad Barber, a travel and barber filmmaker and photographer from Liverpool in the UK. What makes Damien Grooming Goods a very unique project is simply one word, it's disruptive. When you have three different people with three different mindsets and styles and you put us together in a room and be able to create something from scratch in terms of smells, how it looks, how it feels. It felt like something new that we could really do for our industry. We were able to really join this when it was just simply an idea. It was so crazy walking into that room and it was just like a laboratory, right? There was like all these magazines and little balls of fragrances and mood board things to, to create on. It was like super overwhelming. We really, really put everything into this. All of us have worked really hard in testing out so many different materials, performance, scents. What's the packaging? Is there attention to detail? And we were so particular about how we wanted to look, how we want the labels to sit. We don't want to crease here, we don't want to crease yeah. there. All these little challenges is what's kind of made the product range what it is now. All of us are still working barbers. It's very tried and true. Because we've all put our minds together and created different types of products, it's not your typical barber range. We wanted to make sure that everything was at the best quality possible. It's barber and it's editorial and it's everything in between. So it's basically for everyone and that's what we try to represent within the brand campaigns as well. Using different people with different hair, different ethnicities, different looks, you know, even different genders. So I think that's what makes our product line special. To make a statement, that's like almost putting a stamp on something. It's your conviction, it's your commitment, it's what you stand behind. If I had to describe a statement in three words, it would be creative, custom, and strong. And that's my statement. That's my statement. That's my statement. Hello, everyone. Hey, Welcome to our statement class. This will be a barbershop um, class, and we are really excited for having you guys here. Um, I hope you guys have fun and get to learn a lot of the things. Today, we're gonna go through a lot of um, things, um, tip, tips and tricks with, um, with DG. Um, we're gonna get more inspired with global trends, and so and know, also learn how to craft your own signatures with statement looks. Um, so before we start, um, we're really happy to have you all here. Um, so we're going to just give a little bit of introduction and give a really huge welcome to our incredible ambassador. Her name is Dana Gamba, but she goes with the name, stage name, DG Cuts. So she is our incredible ambassador. She's a really top tier educator with 19 years of experience. Um, she's an incredible gatekeeper with you know a lot of success um, under her um, her belt. Um, she has won a lot of awards, including the best haircut in Boston. So I, I really know that she's one of our most popular ones that we have. So we are really excited to have you um, to have you here, DJ. Thank you so much, and I will handle it to you. Awesome! Welcome everyone. I go by DG Cuts. You may know me, you may not, but hopefully, even though I can't see you guys, leave comments, ask questions. Even though this is virtual, we want it to be very immersive. I want you to feel like you're right in the room with me, and have it become very personal to you. Uh, this class is meant to bring out the best version of yourself inside that barbershop feel. Being able to represent statement has been a blessing. And what I love so much about this brand is that, like you saw in the video, it's inclusive, it's custom, it's meant for literally everybody and everything. We want to know what you love about it, what you would want more of it. We want to know it all because we want us to grow as an industry together. Now, I can't see who's in here, but I don't know if you have your barber's license or if you have your Cosmo license. But the one thing that we can all connect on is the fact that we cut hair, right? We're, we're all behind the chair hustling. We're dealing with all kinds of versatility, whether it's in hair, personalities, products. So we want to really be able to showcase what it is that we do and showcase what it is statement's all about. And we call it statement because it is what is your statement. 
right? What, what makes it unique to that person? What is it unique to you? And how do we evolve and grow together? We believe that statement is, it's a very strong brand. It's a very creative brand. And it's something that's really helping bridging the gap between that Cosmo and that barbering world. So a little background about myself. I have a Cosmo license. Uh, I've been in the industry for 19 years. I've done all kinds of different things and won all different kinds of awards. But that's not the best part. The best part is that I committed to the grit and I've been behind the chair this entire time. And um, it's not easy and it's awesome. But the thing is, is it keeps evolving in the barbering world right now. You're starting to see you're starting to see a lot more longer lengths. You're starting to see, you know, that mixture between using your clippers and using your shears. And then now you've got a, a brand like statement coming into the mix being able to help bridge that gap in our styling world. There's a lot of products out there that are just true to the barbering world. But what happens when you get into these longer looks? You want something that's a little bit more versatile. So I'm really excited to show you two haircuts today. We are going to be doing um, a shullet, which if you put the shag and the mullet together, that's what you get, the shullet. So we're going to showcase on this pretty little man right here. So already sectioned him out. Um, what I love about this brand as well is like we might teach you a haircut, but because it is your statement, we want you to be individual with it. I want to show you what a show it's all about with that shaggy kind of 70s, but mixed with like a modern classic look is. Um, you know, I want you to take what I do and make it yours, right? So that's number one. Two, we're going to be doing what we call the brush back, a little bit more classic, a little bit more square, maybe into a round, maybe drop fade. We'll have some fun with that one as well. Um, if, again, you have any questions, leave a comment. Hi, Missy. And, yes, I am very excited. So we're going to get started. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the products that I'm going to start off with because I think that's number one. Being able to have a product that acts as a cutting lotion is really important and something that we've missed in the barbering world for ever. I think this might be one of the first ones. So this is called the grooming spray. Right? So if you can see that in through there, simple, clean bottle grooming spray. What I love about it is that you can never spray too much. Um, it's very like concentrated in a sense where it's going to give you root lift. It's going to thicken the hair a little bit, but if I don't spray it on the root and I don't spray it to thicken the hair and I just missed it, hold on, let's do this, mist throughout, it's going to act as a cutting lotion. Give me a nice slide. A lot of the times when you run out of that even porosity, you can feel the hair kind of all the way down, right? So you want to make sure that you have even porosity and um, it's not too sopping wet. Like I, I wet this, washed him and then uh, let it let it kind of just towel dry so that way I can go ahead and give it even porosity with my grooming spray right if all of our stuff is um, water soluble you know concentrated so you don't want to weigh it down too much right so definitely towel dry you can see my comb just glide all the way through grooming spray is part of if you follow nomad the barber Miguel he helped create this product. There's three creators. There's Sophie, as you saw, Julius, and then No Man, which is Miguel. And I mean, they killed it, guys. It's it's pretty amazing what they've been able to accomplish and do and help for our and do like for our industry in general. Again, just combing it all the way through. I'm gonna pick my mannequin up a little bit. Get that right around there. So because we're doing the shallot, I started sectioning. I wanted to go right under the crown to the deepest part and then bring out where I want like kind of shaggy bangs. Now remember, it's on a men, it's on men. It's on a, you know, maybe a guy who comes in with a longer hair, doesn't want to give it up a little bit, but you need something to do with it. So I want to be able to really kind of accentuate, bring out the eyes a little bit, make it shaggy, take away anything that seems weak. So a lot of people, they come in and maybe they want to keep their length. And this goes for longer lengths all around, whether you're a man, woman, anything in between. So. You want to make sure that everything on the bottom looks strong. Even though you want it to be shaggy, you don't want it to look weak. That's the main thing. And then even keeping square within the face frame, you see that's kind of why I boxed out and created that square. So boxing that out, a little bit on the round in the crown, and I'm going to start off working my way from one side to the other just so that you guys can see. Right? Spray it down a little bit on those ends. All right, 
And that is a beautiful misting bottle there. So I'm gonna grab my shears. I'm gonna do this this way. I'm gonna move over a little so you guys can really see. Tilt the mannequin down a little bit. Now remember I've got that grooming spray in and if I start to feel it dry from like mid shaft, I'm gonna spray it back. I get all the hair out of the way, comb it over. I think that's one thing that's missing. Um, you're seeing a lot of barbers just kind of struggling with their shears a little bit. Whereas if a stylist, we know a lot more. We've been dealing with long hair for so long. We know a lot more and it's easier kind of just dexterity within our hands to, um, you know, grab that hair and section it off and not get so lost. But if you tend to get lost, just comb the hair that you're not cutting away. So every time I'll look at what it is that I'm about to do, like what the, what the root is doing is going to mirror what my cut of the actual hair that I'm cutting is going to do. So remember, if I want to shell it, I'm thinking a little bit of shaggy, longer in the front, but shorter than everything else because it is a mullet. Longer lengths, but I want to concave that. I want it to kind of follow the head and then flare out. So if you think about what that line is going to look like, you're going to go shorter to longer, right? So I'm not going to worry about what's going past my knuckle. I'm just going to cut down, grab that hair again, pull it out. And we're going to do that all the way around, about 90 degrees off base. And when I say off base, meaning straight out. Where the hair grows, I don't want to necessarily um, leave it where it lives on the bottoms. I want to create that uh, length, but I want all this stuff to be off base, off base, and then I start to direct down. So that section is now going to be combed over. Next one grabbed. And this is a form of round layering, but you're just doing it triangular. So triangular meaning shortest to longest this way. So you've got a triangular length in the back. I can take my top piece for a referral or my guide. Make sure I don't pre-cut. I can see my piece in there. So same thing all the way down. Do you guys have any questions about this so far? There are no questions so far. All right. I think good. they're going to start coming. Yeah. You know, I keep try, moving along. Yeah. I try to um, make things very simple. You know, I try not to overcomplicate, make things very simple. But one thing that will always help you is looking at what it is that you're cutting, not from the length that you're taking off, but right from that root. Like I said, that is going to mirror everything that you cut. So if you're bringing it up and really over directing, then you're going to get an overdirected haircut. If you're bringing it over from its base, you're going to get elevation. I mean, I'm sorry, you're going to get over elevation going up and over direction going sideways. So that's actually a cool little way to put it to um, a lot of people get confused with the difference. I mean, I do it too, even just now when I'm trying to explain it, being able to understand what over direction and elevation is going to do, because depending if you're vertical or, or horizontal, they might look a little different, but right now, being off base, I know that I'm getting all that internal length off and keeping my length. What's cool around here is you can start to shag out, slide down, and I'm testing out to see if that grooming spray is still in there, if it's not drying out. It should never feel sticky. It's got a nice scent to it too. I would say it smells a little woodsy, um, kind of classic. Nothing too, um, like the scent isn't overpowering. So whether or not you use it on, you know, even a baby, it's not going to be too much. Bring that all the way down. And again, I can start to slide cut here. I think the one thing about um, a shellet is it's kind of organized chaos, right? You want movement. You don't want everything to sit on top of each other. You want complete movement. So another really cool aspect that you can get into when it comes to doing 
more melody and creating waves in the back is think about doing a haircut where it's like really blunt one one section is really blunt and then the next section you can kind of cut into whether or not you slide cut through it point cut what happens is that bluntness and you'll see me do it on top a little bit that bluntness is going to keep everything else in its lane it's not going to push it too much uh, i'll show you what that's all about too but there's so much you can do when it comes to creating texture and then depending on the product i use is going to give me a different look if I go with something like shine paste, it's going to give me something that's like a little bit day old, right? It's going to feel like I kind of slept in it, a little messy, not too high shine, but just enough of a natural finish. If I go something with matte paste, it's going to give me uh, like a creamy feel to it. I'm going to have a little bit more flexibility. And then if I do, let's say, the wax powder, then... I'm going to get tons. I'm going to be able to scrunch it. I'm going to be able to mold it. I'm going to get a lot of, like, if you think it's little dust particles, I'll show you all about it. It's like these little dust particles. That's going to give me, like, lots of wave, lots of curl. I can texturize with it, um, you know, even diffuse it. So much fun. All right, so I'm starting to get towards that bottom. So I take my gun, and I'm sliding down. So we're starting to get to right behind the ear. So as I get to right behind the ear, I'm gonna pull this up. So you can see the movement that I'm creating in through here. So it's gonna follow that head shape. And then I have all this cool length falling down. Now, the side that I haven't cut yet, just so you can see that difference. This is cut and you can see all that length in through here. That's what's not. So we're gonna take that middle section back, slide it over towards me and continue the same exact thing on the other side. One technique for the whole thing. I'm gonna go back in, use my grooming spray, get it mid shaft, has a nice even spray. That's one thing that I really love about the powder too. So we have the wax um, like spray and then the wax powder, but it gives a nice even spray. Everything here gives a nice even spray. Our hairspray. All right, so here's my previous guide. I don't know if you guys can see that. See a little bit in there? It's my previous guide. So I'm again paying attention to what that root is doing as I'm lifting out. And now slide cut down. Push that section out. We're going right behind that ear. So now you can see my guide. I'm using the finer part of my comb just so that I could get a little bit more tension. I'm gonna start to drop my tension. If you have inconsistent tension while you're combing and cutting the hair, you're gonna have inconsistencies throughout the haircut. So even though it's organized chaos, I still want it to have the same amount of tension. So I'm very careful as to what my fingers are doing. And over time, that becomes just muscle memory as well. It gets to a point where you just don't even think about it. All right, so about right here. Guide, slide that down. As you notice, I never ever go past that knuckle. It's that first rule in Cosmo and Barbering School all over the place. Now, someone always, you know, they'll ask me when they see a cut like this, like, how do you know who to give that to? And like, how do you know, uh, let's see if I can, there we go. How do you know what, who that would look good on? And like I said, like, we're doing very easy techniques. This is a very easy technique, but it creates a very modern look. And I most likely would do it on somebody that maybe is a little more surfery, has longer hair that doesn't want to really let it go, but needs something that's going to emphasize its head shape. Um, I mean, I, this type of cut I actually do on a lot of women, a little bit more. Usually my men, if I do a cut like this, get a little bit more um, shaggy. 
and my women for some reason edge it up a little bit more they'll end up going like real crappie cut this off and go real mullet with it uh so it's really just the individual but like i said we're all about making a statement so it's pushing those boundaries and even if this is not something maybe in your area that anyone is getting you doesn't mean that you can't practice it and try it out on mannequins i mean that's usually how I play around the product when I get a product line in for the first time. It's super awkward when you put a product that you're unfamiliar with what it does onto the person's hair and it's not exactly what you thought or you maybe used too much because, you know, for whatever reason. So I typically will get a mannequin, do a haircut that I don't do in the shop every single day, and then go ahead and make these concoctions, practice, um, there's one really, really, really cool concoction that I've been using a lot on anyone with like curly hair. So what happens when you use matte paste, um, even the fiber pomade on hair that's like semi-damp and just more, more on the drier side. When you use stuff like that, I find that I only have a few minutes to really style before it starts to kind of set in and stick, right? So when someone has curlier hair and maybe I'm a big fan of setting in my foundation, blow drying it, and then going ahead and de doing all my detail work. And on curly hair, there might be a, some curls that I have cut that are still falling on a little bit heavy in areas that I don't want them to. So therefore, if I use a product that is a little bit heavier or something that I'm supposed to be rubbing my hands, I might pull those curls apart. And I don't want that. So I was like, well, then how in the statement line can, with what I know about statement, can I make this work? And so I went ahead and I took our beard oil and I did this on a cut the other day. I'll show you a picture. Uh, I took the beard oil and I did two drops of the beard oil mixed with uh, two sprays of the grooming spray, put it in my hands. And actually the two scents together were like amazing. Uh, I did it this past weekend at a hair show as well. And I just went ahead and twisted the curls. So that way I knew I could pull them apart and cut them as I was, you know, diffusing. But it didn't create a stick, and I used something that, you know, my client would be like, wait, what did you do? Like, why did you use beard oil in my hair? You know, so it's a small line. There's 14 products in this line. So it's not small, but it's, it's small in a sense where we're new. And there's ways to use these concoctions. These are buildable products. We think about it as, like, you know, what makes us different is that, you could go and avant-garde with this. You could use it behind the chair. You can do your editorial shoots. They're buildable products. Being able to understand what it is that they do and your purpose behind everything that you're doing is so very important. And I stress that with all the education that I've ever, um, ever like really taught or shared anything with. And the reason why I stick behind it is because I, for the longest time, just was visual. If someone said, oh, if you do the same thing you did last time, I'm like, yeah, sure. I had no idea what I was doing. Half the haircuts probably didn't grow out well. And I didn't have the care. I, it's like I, I didn't have the need. Um, and then social media came. And I saw all these amazing things that people were doing all around the world, never mind just in my own neighborhood. And um, I thought, wow, how do they do that? And I didn't know. After like 10 years of cutting hair, I still had no idea. So I went back and I educated myself and went to barbering school and um, being able to understand like your clippers, your shears, your products is so important as, as to also what it is and how it is that you're doing something. So being able to say, Hey, you know what? They don't have like a stylist would say to me, maybe they don't have a curly hair product. Stima doesn't have a curly hair product. Well, if you know the, if you know the line, and you use those two concoctions, that was probably one of the best curly hair products I've ever come up with, you know? So it's really cool to see um, with these 14 products, how you can build and really just understanding why that worked. You know, the shine in the, it gave the curl like a little bit of a wooly feeling without making it frizzy because the oil calmed it down. It was really cool. But the reason why I got that wooly feeling is because the grooming spray makes things a little bit thicker. It gives it volume, but also makes it thicker. All right, so I'm right behind that ear. And to me, this is one of the most pivotal sections because I'm starting to get a little bit longer and over directing. And I wanna leave enough room for me to play with as it's dry. 
I always leave a little bit more length so I can freely play when it's dry. All right, so now we get to this side. I tilt my client's head. Let's see if you guys can see that. I'm gonna bring you up a little bit. This way, everything's mirrored backwards, so. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Just looking at any comments, seeing if there's anything you guys need. Okay. So now I connect from back of the ear to the front. I see if I have a guide in there. I have a tiny guide right there. So now I'm going to pull it up, elevate it. And remind yourself, I'm going shortest towards the back. So now I'm elevating up a little bit following that guide. I don't want it to get like dog ear in the back. I don't want it to feel real thick behind that ear. So the more length, the better. And now what happens is these shorter pieces open up that ear a little bit and push that back. Now that's going to become my guide to kind of slack cut through the bottom. And remember, make everything that feels weak, take that off, make it strong. I'm going to spray all this down. It's got a little dry. I said something on stage the other day that I thought um, everyone really related to. And I'm a big family lover. I love hanging out with my family probably more than my friends. And um, someone asked me, or some, you know, someone asked me about where I thought the industry was going. And I really truly believe that statement has come out, even though it came out and launched during COVID, um, I think it's the perfect time right now because there's so many people out there just willing to learn because of the fact that we've been held back for the last two years. We've just been trying to make it work for the last two years. So um, like we always said before, it was the stylists that were trying to really understand the clippers. We were trying to really educate the stylists and, and they were turning them into little beasts. And uh, now you're starting to see all those barbers that are like, oh, I want to learn the shear work. I want longer lengths. And to bring it back to my family, I asked my dad one day, I said to him, like when people ask me, why'd you go back to barbering school when you were so successful in the salon? And I said, you know, my dad was an amazing drummer and he was a rock drummer. And when disco came out, his whole band stopped. And one day, so I asked him and I said to him, you know, why did like why didn't you guys become famous because from what i hear like i mean they were just on their way and he said overnight disco came out and i thought to myself wow like and now i'm in the salon and i'm going i never want to not be able to do something in my industry i want to be able to do it all i can't sit back and just let you know barb the barbers take over and not know how to use clippers and not know how to style with shorter hair and all of that so that's when I went back to school for barbering. And I really think that uh, there's a really just interesting thing that's happening, like in which statement, being able to be that first line that really is so gender neutral is pretty amazing. So if you see me here, I'm going through and I'm just taking some of that length off, right? And I'm starting to go like opening up that ear. This is probably going to become a little bit shorter. I'm actually going to shorten it now rather than waiting. And this is where you get to just play. Now, everything is just opening that face up, so elevating everything up. So I'm going to go through. Now, on actually, let's see if I can do this here. On uh, our client, it's a lot easier because... For some reason, it just sticks on the mannequin, but I'm using the face frame. I have to lift this up. I'm using the face frame and just going in and removing that length. It's almost like you're giving him fringe. It is fringe. The shirt. 
bring that next section down. So now underneath my perimeter is my length that I want to keep. So I'm going to remove everything on top. How do I do that? The same way that I did the back. I'm going to elevate everything up. Bring it down. All right, next section. All right, so you're starting to see that there. Clip the hair that you don't need out of the way. And I'm not gonna go past the bridge of the nose. So I'm gonna take it out that hair's all, if you look at it, it actually grows in that direction. So if I were to blow dry and style it, how nicely it sits on that, that way. So I'm gonna cut it in that direction because I don't wanna over direct, I want it to cut right from the base. That way, if this was a, a real client, it would just fall in his face if you put the grooming spray in damp a little bit of the fiber pomade and just let it go and it will just fall into place nicely all right last section You can tell already where it wants to live. All right, so now we're gonna start on the opposite side. Spray it again with grooming spray. A little bit of mist. Here's my guide. I go back and I work the same exact way around. Here we go. Trying to get it so you guys can see. Okay, there we go. You can tell already how that's going to shape that hair or that head. Remember, if you do round layers and you're following it all the way through, the head is round. So even though I'm not going ahead and like, because I'm following straight with that 90 degree and then working my way down, that concave is just going to happen. Uh, I don't need to actually build weight anywhere or remove weight. I'm just removing some of that length, that distribution of length. That's still a little dry. There we go. Do I have a guide? I do I have a small one, but it's there. It's right here, so cut down. Slide behind that ear. Now remember, we're opening up the ear. So we're elevating up. Now this one's going to be, instead of sliding down, we're going to keep it elevated up. This is right from the middle of the back, you know, middle to back of the ear. When will statement products? Um, Susan, if you're on there, are you able to answer that question? That's the one. I don't know when statement will be available. 
That's a pretty good question. Um, I actually will have to check. I know that um, we are still, as you mentioned, DG, we're a pretty new brand. So um, we're hoping to extend um, our horizons in the near future. Um, but yeah, there's something that we need to um, look forward and um, I'll, I'll check more in, into that information so I can get back to you, Pasha. Yeah, I think the best way for Statement to make its debut in other countries is to have everybody just really fall in love with it. Uh, it's very easy to fall in love with. So being able to tell your friends and your clients about it is going to be the number one way for us to be able to get out there more and share the education. There's so much available. Uh, another thing, and I work with plenty of other companies in the past, and I've been affiliated with other people who work in other companies, and I have to say that it, um, you know, if even just going on our Instagram and just clicking the link in our Instagram, it's so organized. Uh, all of our portals are amazing. You have your YouTube education and it's constantly being updated. You have all of your virtual and your connect through here. Um, you know, being able to just share what it is that we do is going to be the best way for us to be able to move forward faster. So, you know, we really appreciate you guys even just being in this room today and Tell your friends because it really is um, being able to make an individual statement with products is something I've never really been able to done before. I've had to pick and choose the products that I've liked and to carry. I own a shop and carrying all different lines throughout the time of owning and picking from this brand and that brand and this brand. And I feel like I don't need to do that with statement and you're only going to see it grow. So. Um, also to add to that because um, we are actually rapidly trying to launch worldwide. Um, also make sure to stay in touch with your local distributor um, to see, you know, like touch base with them and see, you know, they're actually carrying any statement products. Yeah. Is, does everybody who's in this room right now you can just like type in the comment, do you guys carry the statement brand? Or are you just trying to learn more about it? All right, so right here, I left links so that I could really go in and play with it. Remember like, we're giving a styling class, you know, at a, doing some type of creative cut. We want to be able to play it afterwards. And since I know that this mannequin's hair grows that way, it's going to give me a lot of bounce. So being able to blow, that, blow dry that down, lift it up, get it out of his eyes is going to be awesome. You're going to start to see it really come alive. So I just go through, I feel what it's already doing. It's going to start to feel real heavy and get almost like old school Justin Bieber that way. So instead of cutting that dry, I'm going to take it all the way up. And this is the same way that I would do fringe. So now the underneath, if you can see that, let's do it this way. Underneath here, that short piece is my guide. Now I'm 90 degrees off base, and I'm just gonna point cut down. Same thing all the way across. Kick in the stand. All right, it's gonna lift everything up, almost like layer that whole bangy section. And when it's dry, we're really gonna slide through, have some fun with it. So right now, you've got a little bit of bulk over the ear. We're gonna keep that for right now. I'm gonna start to move forward onto the top. Remember, you're creating a solid foundation. The one thing about barbering uh, whether it's longer lengths or or not, is being able to work methodically throughout your haircut. So creating that vision in your head, figuring out what shape you're going to create, and then going ahead and saying, okay, how can I um, make this this person bespoke and individual? So again, add that grooming spray. I'm going to lower him a little bit. Now I'm going to comb everything down. This whole section is going to end up going forward. I really comb it in the direction that it wants to live in, but I'm going to, everything that's in this mannequin that wants to go back, 
I am going to push that forward. Now, if someone came in and they said, hey, I, I want a shallot, I want something that's like shaggy, uh, maybe even crappie, but yet longer in the back, a little mullety. If they have a, a receding hairline, but their hair grows forward, great cut for them. If they have a receding hairline and their hair tends to go backwards or just goes backwards in general, it's going to be really hard. You might want to talk to them and say, hey, we might, it might be better for you to do a brush back or maybe even like a shorter mullet type of deal. Being able to have um, a say in kind of what that hair does isn't really up to you. You really have to look at where it lives. So if it cannot go forward and sit nicely, I would say no amount of product and heat is going to help them because you might be able to um, – yeah, me too. So you might be able to go ahead and style it, but for them at home, they're just starting this out. Like you might be familiar with styling. They're not. So you have to remember where their hair lives is where you're going to want to cut. And so always remember to comb it in the direction of growth. All right, so I'm going to take the top from the back corner. Now we're doing diagonal sections. That's my guide from the side. Bring that down. Next one. Here's my guide. See that? Something I learned this weekend is that all of our products are you're able to take on the planes, which I didn't know before. How many pro how many times have clients come in and they're like, I need more product? One good taken. TSA. One thing that's uh, cool about the hairspray, I'll let you guys know now while we're doing this, is the hairspray is 150 milliliters. I think most hairsprays are 300, but it's so concentrated and so lightweight that I think it's like 85%, um, like 85% of it acts as if it's, how do I say this? it lasts up to like 300 milliliters. So you get more with less, if that makes sense. Just because of it's lightweight and concentrated, you don't need a whole ton of it. All right, so I'm going all the way around. And if you see, everything I do is I have a guide. So I'm, that's that whole thing, like working methodically, not falling out of place. Once I start blow drying and cutting dry, that's when I love to get wild with it, have some fun with it, and make it its own. That's when you see the products make it come alive. And again, I could style this with the matte paste and have it be completely different, a little bit more lived in. The fiber pomade is going to give it a lot more separation. Maybe I diffuse it with it, rub it in my hands, get the little elastic fibers and diffuse it in. Um, what else? If I use the, the dust spray, so, so let's say somebody doesn't have as much hair as this mannequin, but they want something like this. The, the spray powder is going to give it that volume, but you got to do that a little bit more dry. It's going to give out added volume. So if you someone has thinning hair and you're trying to do everything you can to make it feel full for them, the grooming spray with the dust spray is going to be awesome combination. All right, picking this all up. And now I have my little back sections here to connect in. Now this mannequin does not have like sideburns that are already there. Like a lot of sideburns that are a little fuzzy in through here. So a lot of the time I would go in and use a little bit of clipper and make that nice and clean. I'm going to wait to the end to see whether or not we want to do that. If they have long hair there that doesn't need to be cut and to create that real sh like shaggy mullet, I wouldn't cut it, but 
most of the time I see that you would use your trimmers in through there. So now I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to break up anything that I did. A lot of times what I previously cut, I like to go through and just a little bit more deeply point cut, give it a little more, more movements on that end so I can feel where, when it's blow drying, I can feel where I need to do more. Need to cut more, remove more. How are you guys feeling about this so far? Hey, dropped it. No one knows. All right, let's go for it. Let's break that up again. And now I'm gonna do the very top part of the crown. You can see these little pieces. Sometimes I like leaving stuff like that to be like, if I were to be editorial, I would make all this stuff nice and, you know, shake it up a little bit. And then I'd kind of like hairspray these guys flipping out. So sometimes what you would do for editorial is going to be different than how you style for your clientele. Um, one of the hardest things that I've ever done is sell product. It is, I'm not a salesperson. Um, I, I, I will tell people what I'm using and then they come back running through the door and they're like, Oh wait, like, can I buy that? You know, I'm terrible, terrible, terrible at that stuff. But what I'm learning is that with this product, I have people buying it in my shop that aren't even here for a haircut just because of the way it smells. Most people think that when they come in, there's a candle that um, is the scent, you know, but it's just, it's so, so, so good. But the three creators created their own scents. So I want to share a little bit about that with you because I thought that was super interesting just because I am so um, into things that smell good. I mean, who isn't? But it's such an easy, it's an easy sell when people walk in. And then when you put it in front of their face and you're using it and it's easy to use and it's buildable and lightweight, it doesn't feel like it's a hold on. And the price point is good. I mean, it just, it really does sell for itself. So I've been having no trouble with this product in my shop. Whereas if I still have products that I carried before that are just still sitting on the shelf, you know, if someone buys it, great. If they don't, you know, whatever. But um, so right now, I would say in the summertime, my favorite scent so far has been Julius's. It's a little bit of, I wrote it down because I don't know all of them yet. Um, creamy coconut, I have it written up. Sandalwood and Oris. And it is, it's so good. It feels like I'm on vacation. Like I'll be using the product and it just feels like I'm like hanging out maybe with my type. So I love that scent. I feel like Nomads is very classic. Uh, it's woodsy, spicy. And then my sis Stay Gold, she's got like peppermint, refreshing, it's citrusy. Really, really cool. They've worked hard. These kids have worked so hard on creating a product that is versatile that is it just it works and they believe in it so much and when I started using it I realized how hard they really you know how hard they went in on this on this product line and um, it's been a pleasure to be able to get to know the product line on a different level and the fact that they go ahead and say hey you know what we have all these people who can educate and do things differently um, being able to share what my haircut means to me and what my statement is with a shullet might be completely different than Julius and his shullet. But the coolest thing is we can use the same products, you know, come out different ways, but yet they're the same. So it's been just really fun being able to do that. I'm going to go ahead and blow dry this guy now. Remember, I already have my grooming spray all over. It's going to protect from heat. It's going to help me blow dry. It's going to give me a little lift, but I'm still going to be able to cut all the way through. All right. So, Grooming spray is already in there. That is made by uh, Nomad Miguel. Follow him if you don't already. He's a genius. Um, so I'm going to put it on low heat. Normally I would diffuse it, but because I don't have product in there yet, I'm not going to.
So I have it on very low heat. And I don't want to over dry. What I mean by that is I'm not trying to blow out the cuticle. I'm just trying to tame it down. I want this to be a textured, messy look. Nothing too smooth. I think one of the main important things about blow drying is it's the same thing as if you're washing the hair and you're kind of feeling for any inconsistencies within the scalp. So as I'm blow drying, I'm looking for inconsistencies within the haircut, maybe a piece that's a little bit longer. Um, I'm feeling for like really high density areas. And also behind the ears for me, very high density. Still a lot of work to do within the sides and within the crown. Um, and the bangs, the fringe. But after that, it's feeling pretty good. Like, I really like how this back is right now. I'm going to give it a lot more movement, pick it up, elevate it, cut it, give it um, some kind of a little bit more organized payoff through here. But that's all I'm doing is as I go through, I feel where those inconsistencies are. Like, the fact that it's concave here, we can, like, a little bit more round and bulky. Cool. If this was more tighter, right? If I kind of, like, create less weight within there. The only way to create more less weight is to elevate the hair up and give it more like a layering feel. All right, so now that that is mostly dry, I'm a little damp on the sides, but that's okay. I'm going to go back in with my shears, shake it up, have some fun with it. Before I actually cut it, I'm going to go in and just calm it down a tiny bit with the shine paste. I'm going to add the blow dryer back on after this, just so that there's some pieces that are just so thick. Um, they kind of blew open a little bit with that heat. So I'm gonna go in with that shine paste. I'm not going and whoo, putting it right into his front area, but just going in and kind of calming that cuticle down. I'm gonna do that whole top layer. Then I go underneath. There's the beebs right there. <laughs> All right, so add a little bit of heat. What that heat is gonna do is melt down so that it feels like it's just been in the hair. It's not sitting on the cuticle yet. You have to remember that anything with the word palming, paste, that is going to sit on the cuticle. And as your head heats up, it's going to kind of get into the cuticle. All of our ingredients are nourishing. 
Nothing's ever meant to dry you out. They, they're easy to wash out. I haven't had one client say, oh my God, I can't get this out of my hair, which has been very different with a lot of other products that I've used. Um, so it kind of reacts. Like some of them can reactivate with water, like the classic line, like Nomad the Barber, the classic Pine Man, that can reactivate. This one, I feel like um, if you put more water in it, you're going to dilute it. All right. So you have to remember, they are water soluble. So they're going to dilute. But with heat, it's going to give me exactly what your scalp would do if you did a five minute workout, you know, sat in the sun for a minute. Just going to kind of go in, give it the shine. But if you say, okay, this is a shine paste, what does that mean? Does it mean it's going to be greasy? Because if it's going to be greasy, I have to tell my client, hey, you only need a little bit of it. Is that better or worse, right? So for me, you only need a little bit of this, but it's not shiny. You could tell it adds a sheen. You get a little bit of a sheen, but it is not shiny, right? Whereas if uh, more and more of the classic pomade, you're going to get more of a shine to it. Um, I would say that I prefer personally, and this is, could be completely different for you, but I have found what works for me is I love, I love matte in the summer, shine in the winter, depending on the hair texture, right? So I come from, like you guys, you might be in a place where there's no seasons and I envy you, but me, it's going to be so cold here in a few months. And a lot of the times, um, you know, in the summertime, like right now it's almost 100 degrees out. And if someone goes in and they have a pomade in their hair or something with shine and they happen to use too much and I didn't teach them enough or they just was real quick in the morning, then um, that might look a little too shiny, right? So I want to make sure that I teach my clients how much to use, when to use it, how to use it, and the whys behind it all. That's cool already, though. I can see this, like, coming along the shape, you know? It's different. So shine paste is in. As you can see, I can still comb through, but it's giving me that separation. Isn't that awesome? Like, just being able to see that separation in general. So pick my, oh, there we go. Let's pick these sides up. My long piece from there. So I'm going to lift up. And I don't worry about any pieces that feel longer because I still left, you're going to see some of the very crown that are longer in there. I'm going to cut them as I see fit. I changed my shear to something a little bit more with a thin, thin blade so I can get deep cuts in there. I've actually had these for, whew, I can't even tell you how long. All right. Starting to see it lay down a little bit better. Someone wants to ask me, how do you know how much to cut? And you'll notice that I create a rhythm in my head. So I count a lot of the time. If I'm going ahead and I'm, you know, while I'm talking, maybe I'm not counting as much, but when I am focusing and, you know, just going and getting in my rhythm, I'll go ahead and I'll do okay, one, two, three, four, five. Maybe put that down, create my next section. One, two, three, four, five. So that way, as that hair grows out and that expanded shape happens, I don't have a piece that's sticking out here and then one that's here. It's all going to be organized, right? I might even brick layer it. I might go one, two, three, four, five, and then up to eight on the next section. You know, and that's just going to give me consistency throughout the cut. So as it grows out, I know exactly how it will grow out. That expanded shape what we is what we call that grow out. That expanded shape is going to be the biggest thing. You don't have to worry about what you're taking off ever. You have to worry about what you're leaving on. That's what's going to matter within any haircut, whether it's a fade or not. So being able to understand the, why you're leaving it on is going to help you understand what that grow out is going to be. If someone's paying $20 for a haircut and, you know, let's just say um, they're coming back in a week from now. It's mostly because they have something like real, real tight, real short. They want it to look good, clean up. Something like this can grow out for about four or five, six months. So maybe it's a little bit more pricey. It takes a little bit more time. 
So you want to make sure that as I'm, as I'm cutting right here, I want to know, like, in six months from now, where is that going to be? It's okay for now. Where is it going to be in six months? Is it going to be all the way down here? So that means right now I'm going to take this all the way up, right? If I say, hey, when's the next time you want a haircut? Eh, I don't really like getting my haircut more often. I'm going to go a lot shorter in the areas that count. What's cool about the shine paste is it's giving me a nice grip. Nothing's falling out of my hands. I don't have to have crazy tension. It's just enough grip. It's not sticky on my hands. Now, don't get me wrong. I can feel it, but it's not sticky. So next section, everything's coming up. I remind you, I'm not bringing that back because what's going to happen if I bring that back? I'm going to drop it. It's going to be way too short. So again, I'm mirroring, let's see if I can pull this down, the root, right? So if I'm here, I'm directly off base. If I'm here, I'm over directing. So I'm bringing it straight, looking at where that is. That's why you'll see, that's why they tell you not to go past your second knuckle because it's so, like we, we do it a lot. We forget, we think, oh, because you don't want to cut yourself, but that's actually not the reason. You can go past your second knuckle and not cut yourself. The reason why I don't go past my second knuckle is because I, at that point, can't see what the base of the hair is doing. So the next haircut that we're going to debut is the, um, it's called the shadow, or no, it's called the brush bag, right? I think it's the brush bag we're doing. So it's going to be a fade into hair that is brushable and just exactly what it sounds like. You can just brush it back. So think of an upgraded pompadour, a little looser, a little more playful, friendly. I don't know about you guys, but in my town, all of the high school boys and young college men, are they all have long hair right now. They're all doing mullets and shullets and, um, I mean, it's just wild very popular and then if they don't have long hair they're doing the brush back or really long like TikTok croppy hair and a lot of them a lot of the younger kids are using the hairspray and they're using the powder right here this is the wax powder so a lot of them are using this you could use that in here too, but it's going to be a little bit more uncontrollable as if you were to use like the shine paste or the matte paste. Matte paste is going to be a little bit more of a creamy feel. Shine paste is going to give you that like day old look. Anyone have any questions about the product? We haven't really talked about the shampoo and conditioner, um, the cleansing line. So one thing that I thought was really cool, yes, this whole line right here. One thing that I thought was really cool with Statement is that they included this in. How many times have you seen a barbering-based product that doesn't have the shampoo to go with it, right? So if you want the you want somebody to kind of understand the whole collection and to when they you know after a few haircuts or maybe you know one year worth of visits they've got the shampoo they've got the product of their choice maybe they've got a couple different products but the shampoo's been really fun i've actually was never a fan of the all in one not this all in like all in one cleansers in general i think it was more like my cosmo background i just thought it was like a really cheap way to sell products Kind of a two for one i don't know I just wasn't into it then i used this one and i was like they hit it spot on it's what the industry has been missing so for your clients that maybe just don't necessarily they're like ah i don't really i use whatever my wife has in the shower or whatever the case may be uh, this is a really good introduction as to why they should have their own everything has um charcoal activated which is like I mean, the reason why it's all the rant and rave right now, having charcoal in it, is because it it's cleanses and it, but it doesn't strip. A lot of the times 
things can strip the hair. A lot of our stuff is like sulfate free. Uh, it's not going to wash out your color like crazy. It's gentle. You can use it every day. What I like about the all-in-one cleanser is that it doesn't feel like it strips the hair. It, it's smooth feeling. Um, it's really cool. You got to you gotta feel it for yourself. Smells great. Then we also have a cleansing shampoo bar, which my guys are loving for their beards in particular. So I don't have a beard. I can't tell you how it feels. The only thing about this product that I will warn you about is it has a wheat protein in there. So if you or any of your clients are allergic to wheat or have celiac, that's going to be the one that you cannot offer them. But other than that, all of our products are safe on that level. But I believe they are all sulfate free, silicone free. So it's going to be okay with color. A lot of the barbers out there and stylists are getting really into fashion colors and seeing that side of the industry grow is really cool. Now, if you notice, I haven't used the thinning shears or blending shears for any of this yet. And I'm actually not going to. So there's that long piece there. I'm going to cut that down. And these are on the corners. So if you're thinking, like, how do I create shape? You start thinking about round heads. How do you create something that's a little bit more tighter, a little bit more square, but you're not really taking away from the density in the hair or building up that weight in certain areas? So I like to say a head has four corners. It actually has five, but in this case it has four. So if you were to put a box on him, right, you were to put a box on there, that box would have its corners right here. So those are the corners that are going to either create weight, which is going to build square, or you're going to remove it and it's going to build round. Right now, I'm removing it. So you'll see in this crown area, you're going to see a lot of like longer pieces that I left. So you should, I should be able to pick up this corner and see lot length. And I'm going to cut that off. So here you go. Here's my guide. Here's my other guide. I'm going to cut deep cuts. Remember, I don't want it to connect and be perfect. I want it to be shaggy. And the only way to have movement is to create a little inconsistency. We get, especially in the barbering world, we get so like, gotta fade, gotta fade, gotta blend, gotta blend. So this is so hard to not connect at all. But that's why I continue to call it organized chaos. And you can see that product going in there and working. So remember, this isn't a corner, so there's no longer piece. You'll see on the next cut um, how to build those corners up. So again, here's my shorter piece, my longer piece. I'm going to cut. That's my corner. This next session is going to have a little bit of my corner in there. All right. This is going to be the last bit, and then we're going to style. Now we have choices. We either leave the uh, shaggy sideburns, or you take them down. If you were to cut them off, you're now getting into much more mullet. If you leave them, you got you rocking the shullet. How are we doing for time wise? Uh, we have 50 minutes left. Perfect timing. Now, because I love my clippers also dearly, I'm going to go in and just give it a little zhuzh with a little clip of work, make it a little bit more my style. All right, so I'm going to go in there. See if you guys can see there.
it's a mannequin, you might as well play it, right? So just like you would a beard when you've seen a lot of bulk, you already got some product in there. You can go ahead and just rock it down. I'm going to do the whole um, back portion and just take away that length. So I'm going to bring this up. See all that nastiness on the bottom? We're going to take that away. So I would move my client forward. Now, one thing I think a lot of um, times when I'm teaching, people get like, especially in person, I hear like, oh, I could never do that on a client. But I always ask, well, why? You know, like they don't, they don't know what's good or bad in the industry for the most part. So if you take a trimmer and you take it to the back of their hair to remove some of that rather than your shears, what would be wrong about it, you know? So remember, it's always fun to play and think outside the box. And that is actually what people are going to talk about you the most. Like my women, like we're in a more of a, it's more of a studio now, but it was a very barber shop setting. And um, my, my women would come in, like my little old ladies, everybody would come in with long, long hair and whatnot. And um, I started getting more and more and more of that clientele because they'd walk in and, oh my God, I'm in a barber shop. But this person's there and they cut my hair and, you know, so they start to talk about it. So if you are constantly using shears, I recommend like, Try using your clippers on doing a whole haircut like this. Like, I can do the whole thing with my clippers if I want to. That versatility, I think, is really, really important. Um, but that is what people are going to talk about you and your brand. And that's going to how that's going to be how you are able to cultivate a clientele to get, you know, different type of haircuts in. If you may remain, how do you put it? If you remain comfortable you're never going to grow, right? So see how that's like got that round in there and then just gets flat through. So I'm going to leave this how as is. I'll probably after the class will detail it some more and then post it up on my page. So just want to make sure I have enough time to show you guys the next one. But let's style this out. And you can tell like it's already got that texture from the Face, <laughs> uh, judging the face of the mannequin likes haircut. I think actually it looks kind of good. Cool. He's kind of like a Tony and guy. All right, let's do this. Actually, let's do. I'm gonna do a little bit of the matte paste. All right, so that's what this looks like inside. It's got a very creamy consistency. So very easy to just like scoop out with your finger. I normally do one scoop. And then what I do is I rub my hands. No, typically my station's right here in front of me. So let's just say I rub my hands together and I try to do it kind of near their face. Like I invade my client's space, you know, like touching you for this long. I want to invade your space. I invade that space so that they get that first sniff of it. Right? Like I suck in that scent. They're like, what is that? But by the time they're like, what is that? They're already looking in the mirror because I do this. So like you guys can see my mirror, but let's say my station's right here. I put it like that. So we, they can kind of see the words in the mirror, but they don't really know because everything's backwards. They're, they're smelling like, oh my God, it's so good. What is that? Boom. I now can put it in front of them and it's pretty much sells itself. And then I teach them all about the differences and why to use it, what to use it for, how to use it, um, and just really let them kind of see it. Most of the time, I don't have to do much more than that, but because I don't like to be salesy, um, that's the how I do it. I just put it in, in front of the mirror back, in front of them backwards. So if they do ask about it, I'm like, oh, what, this? And I don't have to really force it. You know, if they want to know, they'll ask, and if they don't, I don't even ask. You know, I don't have to tell them. So, I'm a mannequin's getting wobbly now. So I go in and remember four corners that we talked about. Sorry, things backwards. 
four corners that we talked about. Now I take it and I scrunch those four corners. This is also like, can get kind of wolfy this way. If I left everything and I cut it forward, uh, it could be that little wolf cut as well. Perfect. All right, so four corners. I'm bouncing all that up. I'm not going ahead and making it bigger than it is. Everything else that's on my hands, pushing it down. Maybe I'll fly these guys away a little. Just cool, fun, playful. If I want to make it more masculine, what I would do is like really, I would take that corner off really piece all this out, slide cut through that all, but just for the fun of shape and being able to open the space up, it's cool for the class. All right, so now I think of product three levels. So this is our finisher. This is your hairspray, right? So what I love about this product is again, that even spray that you have. So this is the product that I was talking about that's 150 milliliters but it's almost like you get 300 milliliters out of it because of the fact that it's so like concentrated. Um, what else can I say about, that? oh, this is a really cool thing. So hairspray is meant to hold, but no one tells you how fast, right? So this is the best way to test out your hairspray. So let's say all these little pieces I wanted to really pull down, say for the sake of editorial, I wanna put some up, but I know that if I touch too much, it's going to stick on my hands and I'm going to pull out pieces that I don't want to pull out. So I do the test. I spray it on my fingers and I go one, two, three, four, five, starting to stick around six, seven, eight, starting to get sticky. So I know that I've got anywhere between six to eight seconds before I start grabbing the, the hair and it pulling apart on me. Okay, so if you're doing something editorial, you're just piecing out a pixie cut or you've got like little wings that want to come out anything that you guys can think of or just like the little horns that everyone's cool with doing um go ahead and test it out see where it's where it sticks on you and then you know that you've got that mitch before you start pulling the hair apart so go ahead here piece it all out For some reason, my music in the background just kicked on. So if it is loud, let me know and I will go and turn it off. So see how you just kind of spray. If you want hairs to stick up, spray from underneath. Yes, the hairspray does have a very cool scent. This is also, um, let's see, who made the hairspray? Um, Julius, I believe, made the hairspray. So still same, same scent line throughout all of his products. He's got that sandalwood. Yes, this is all, this line that you see right there, that's all Julius. Awesome. All right. So that's kind of like a shaggy, wolfy, my version, my statement of what this shell is. Every time that I do a haircut, I try to make it different than something I've done before, whether it's one thing different. If someone comes in and they want the same thing as the person that just walked out, I'm most likely, be, oh, okay, but I won't do it. I'll do something different just because it's fun. It's fun to change it up. So this is my version and my statement of the shullet. So I just kind of like concave there. That's a cool, that's like a cool picture view right there. And again, imagine if, um, if you take those sideburns off your full mullet from there, you know, so, so many looks you can get with this. This is something that I probably would definitely do for more editorial. Um, maybe I'd get some fun clients that could come in and get this, but for the most part, I think this would be like really fun editorial shoot. So that's how I do that. Uh, any questions about this, please, please reach out through the comments. Um, I'll try to answer as much as possible. And also, if you're thinking about something for the future, uh, you can DM me, DG Cuts, all right? So I'm move him out of the way. All right, so next up, 
and this was previously washed with the all-in-one cleanser. Uh, I've been using the all-in-one cleanser the most lately. I love the shampoo and conditioner, um, but I've been feeling like I've been just trying to get people to get out of their boxes a little bit. So anybody that does buy the shampoo and conditioner, I try to have them look at the all-in-one cleanser first just because it's just different and it works great. So all-in-one cleanser. I love the all-in-one cleanser for, for a couple of reasons. I feel like um, it doesn't leave it squeaky clean. It almost feels like it has a little slip to it, which is nice. The shampoo is great. Like if you're using the paste, the, the pomades, uh, if you have a client that's using the dry wax, the, tri the spray wax, you're definitely going to want a shampoo, right? You're not going to want the all-in-one cleanser. It's not going to remove all of it. We might have to do a couple a couple pumps. Whereas if with the shampoo, it's meant to just like clarify it out of the hair without stripping the hair. And then the conditioner is going to soothe and smooth the cuticle. Um, I will tell you one thing that our products are more naturally derived. So if you've been using... I don't want to say some other brand, but if you've been using some something in CVS, let's just say, and your hair's a little bit on the drier side, and you start using statement, or you have a client that's starting to use statement, you want to make sure that they understand that it's going to take a little bit of time for their hair to become really like nice again. Underneath all of that old cleanser that they were using is probably silicones, things that coat the hair that just weigh it down. This is, this, the shampoo is going to act like a clarifier. It's going to remove all that. It's going to cleanse the hair from that. You're going to start over. It's going to be unique to you so it becomes your hair texture, not something bogging it down. So you're going to want to make sure that they get the conditioner as well so that it helps replenish the cuticle. That bond sets in, makes it feel good. If they don't have hair that you feel needs to kind of be reworked or not from bleach or whatever the case may be, the all-in-one cleanser would be um, an excellent choice to start them off if they're not used to buying something that is, um, you know, shampoo and conditioner. Okay, so on this lovely model here, we are going to be doing something called the brush back. The brush back, we're going to either taper or fade it down. I'd say let's do a taper. It's nice. Um, tapers and fades, in case you don't know, they are the exact same thing except for a fade goes all the way around the head. And a taper sits on just underneath the occipital bone and maybe just on the, um, let's see right here, just into the sideburn. How we know not to go too far is just a three finger rule, right? So let's pull all this hair up. Let's just say here. Someone says, I want to get a taper. Why would you do a taper? Well, a taper is going to give you depth. It's going to maybe if they have a really short crown, it's going to be able to help you grow the hair out without going too high and riding that fade too high. So the highest form of a taper is going to be your third finger. So you got low, mid, and high. Once you go onto that occipital bone, you now have to connect it all the way around, which becomes your fade. Both of them are transitions from light to dark, right? So that light to dark is, is really, it's what, the light shines through. So think about all that depth that you're leaving on. You want it to flow. This is a, you know, we, we don't want that barbering classic brush back look. We want it to flow into it, especially if someone comes in and has this much hair, then you can really create that round back here and into that nice gentleman look. Um, so let's start with it because I know that we're going to be running short on time and we'll make sure we get this look done for you. I'm going to go ahead and just section up the entire top. We're going to work on the fade first or the taper first. Tapers are really, really, um, it's one of my favorites in barbering just because of the fact that you get all this extra length to work with and that depth is cool. You can do like, I don't know, just so many looks with it. Fades, I think, are more fun in, as far as playing around with different shapes within the fade, but uh, they grow out different. They got to come back more. Like with tapers, they don't have to come back as often.
All right, so let's get this hair out of there. Whee. Okay, everyone's feeling good? Thumbs up? Let's go. There's two ways to not ride too high. You can either take a clipper over comb and remove some of that hair, or you can do it the way that, like my sis uh, Sophie, how she does it is she'll go around, she'll grab that grooming spray in. Because again, this is our foundation. We look at it as that base. So same thing if you were to get your nails um, painted, you would go in and you'd get a base coat and then your color and then your top coat, right? So this is our version of the base coat here. This is going to help you set yourself up for success, create even porosity, smells fantastic. Your client is already intrigued. Glides the comb all the way through the hair. And you've got a couple options here. I'm going to do it the way that she does it because I think that there's not a lot of people out there that really start a haircut this way. And it's challenging, but it's really cool. So I'm going to start it with you guys. Now, mind you, we are looking to keep length within that crown and underneath it. We want to keep length here and go from length into literally nothing there, right? So in order to do that, that means I'm going to go shortest and then drop it down, okay? So show you how we do that. I'm going to start with one section, not too thick. Maybe if you don't have really big hands, the... Uh, you know, one finger depth. So remind yourself, we're going longest to the back. So that means you can put your elbow out. And if you put your elbow out, let's see if you guys can see that, it's awkward down the uh, camera. So elbow out, you're already creating length going that way. And I'm going to take that hair off. This is going to be my guide. All right, you see that right there? I know it's dark. So next section, right underneath that, or right behind that. How can I get you guys to see? There we go. I'm gonna spray again. And now I'm gonna actually spray with a little bit of water too. Okay. Next section. What this does is just lets me know that I'm not going to go higher than this when I'm working with my clippers. I can blend, but I'm not going to go higher. So let's try and climb it around. I get my previous section into my guide. There it is. There we go. And now I'm working my way up. All right. I mean, if you want to start from here and work yourself back down so that way you find where you're at, that's fine too. Remember, there's no wrong way to do this. This is just a different way. Um, there's times where I do do this with a lot of people who come in with longer hair. But it's not often. Sometimes I don't have enough time. So I'll do this with clipper over comb. Lost my guide. Let's find it. Right, and now I'm going to go back around. And this is a really good practice um, because it is, it is a weirder way to go about it, but it is really cool once you start to see it all come alive. What it does is if you are newer to barbering, it helps you remain controlled. Barbering is all about control. 
it's small movements and you don't have a ton of um, space to work with. Remember, if we're going from legit a skin taper into all this hair, we've only got from here to here to go skin into that hair. All right, so that becomes my guide. Now that I have my guide set in, I can go ahead with a clipper comb. Now I all the way closed. And I'm going to go see where my guide is. I'm diagonal, removing all that length. Same thing here. Underneath, diagonal. The reason why we're going diagonal is because we want to keep the length that we created and follow it down, but remove everything quickly. I'm gonna go all around the head and remove that length for you guys. <laughs> Almost dropped her. I hate like pounding these heads onto here. <laughs> okay, let's get back to it. Remember diagonal, don't keep your phone, your phone, don't keep your clipper comb horizontal. You want it diagonal, you want it going in that direction. So remember, we're going to be brushing all this back. So the hair that's left longer should be able to flow back into a, technically a taper fade underneath. And then all the hair on top, the front is going to be disconnected, but the back is going to be connected. Okay, so now that we have all that hair off, looks like a crazy little bush back there. We're going to take a point, 1.5, one and a half, open it all the way. Hey, what's going on here? What's happening? That was weird. Let me grab another one. Hold on one sec. Okay, we're back. All right, so one and a half open. We're gonna rock out. Now, same thing like when I'm building weight. The reason why I'm holding my comb down and then clipping out is because I want to build weight in certain areas. I wanted to build weight right on the top of that occipital bone. So I'm holding my comb down and it's helping me build weight there. Now, if I were to do this and rock out, I'd be removing all that weight. I'd get much more graduation. So same thing here, and you can kind of start to see that shape fall through. Same thing on the other side. And the hair actually grows in this direction, so that's perfect. Or was weaved in in this direction. 
I'm not going too deep and I'm not riding too high. I'm just taking enough off. Now I'm going to take a one. So underneath your one and a half, you're going to do your one. Your one is like that. Your one is going to be open. Thank you. Now remember, we're not going above the occipital bone, but I still want to keep my depth. I want it to be almost like a classic taper. Now that I have that, remember all these guards are open. I'm take my point five. You can choose whether or not you want a soft taper, something that pops a little bit more. I was going to go soft, but we're going to pop it. So I can go ahead and just create my line of demarcation. Now I'll go ahead and open. You guys see that? And that door will just get the light on it a little more. There we go. What I think Stephen really captured and what this product line really did, and I think they did it because of the creators, because you have three people that are completely different types of barbers and stylists that are using and inventing these products. And I think what happened was knowing how detail oriented we all are, they created a product line in that same manner. They were very detail oriented in creating it. So they know like, you know, that it's a concoction, it's a, you can cocktail it, you can build upon it, you can grow with it as everyone's on their own journey. But if you can grow with the brand in your hairstyle and cutting, you, you just kind of married those two worlds together and it's really, really cool. But I think because they understand the fact that Longer lengths is going to come and go, shorter lengths are going to come and go, and they're creating a, a product line that's really universal for all of you. It's just really amazing to see, and it's what I've been missing my entire career, to be honest. So I'm very, I'm very lucky and feel very um, blessed to be a part of this and be able to share it with you guys today. Now when I do a taper or a fade, I tend to like to do it on dry hair, only because you can see all the details and it doesn't stick. Obviously my uh, my client here isn't, isn't warm blooded, so there's no stick to it, so it's a little bit easier. But on a client in the chair, I would prefer to do it while it's dry. And then obviously cut the length from the top while it's so now I'm going to go back to my one, and I'm going to close it. Remember, this is my one and a half. Tiny little movement. And what's really cool about practicing fades on mannequins is there the hair is literally put in by rows. So you'll see lines in there that on a real person might not be there. But if you aren't, if your fades aren't like super blurry, that's totally okay. Because your mannequins is something that's actually really fun to practice on. People are like, hey, working on mannequins, it's so hard. To me, they're really fun because I get to actually use all the techniques that I know about clippers on my mannequin. So if you look right now, you see line for line for line, right? I can try to work those out with just my clipper. So we call this corner cutting. You put your clip, your all the way down, this is a 0.5. Now I know that that's a one in through here. So I'm gonna take my 0.5 on that line and just try to work it out. Remind you, 
a transition of light to dark. That's all a fade or a taper is, that light that actually shines through the depth of the hair that you're leaving. Remember, it is about what you're leaving on, not what you are taking off. So you go in and you're letting just that light shine through. Remember, your product is your finisher. That the grooming spray is what helps me get through the hair nicely and helps me blow dry and set my foundation up for success. But I, as much as I want to learn about my product and teach my clients about my product, I always like to teach them about what it is that I'm doing to their hair as well. Not that they get the whole aspect of it. You can see that the lines are starting to come out a little bit. This one's kind of in there pretty good. Again, just my corners. Now I'm using my little lever to open up the blade, of, cutting blade a little bit more. Okay, so practicing that. So now you have this big gap here, but remember, this is what I left. That is my guide. So now I want to go in. You can either use your shears if you're comfortable. You can go in with another two and start to rock it out. I'm going to go in with clipper over comb. The reason why I love to is because it's like, I don't know, for me it's really fun, clipper over comb. You can do it any way that you want. No way is wrong in order to be able to blend that. I make sure that my lever is all the way closed. Still working diagonal. Now if I start to do this, I start to change my shape. Remember, horizontal, I'm working a horizontal shape. If I'm working diagonal, I'm creating shortest to length, which is still, it's basically a very short version of a show it. It's just, it's the same exact thing. I'm working um, opposite, you know. I don't know if that makes sense, but I love geometry, so I'm all about that life. But basically, um, what I'm trying to say is that there's three primary shapes in haircutting, and most haircuts we do either two of those shapes you never really do just one and if you understand your shape you be like oh it's just a shorter version of what i did before it's really fun really cool now my comb is under so my comb being under i'm removing weight right and removing weight is again letting that light shine through so i'm blending um, if my comb was under, what am I doing? Building weight, which is how we created all of that length in the back. So now I'm going right underneath it and removing in order to connect. Now, if I went ahead here and started to go all the way across, I'm now creating square because now I'm working on my corners. So I'm going to go back, see if I can, there we go, let's do that for you. Now these sides. Diagonal, connect. If you want a really soft look, you can put your um, 0.5 guard on and do clip over comb that way as well. Now I like to finish one whole side before I move on to the other. So I'm going to go in with my trimmer, shape up around the ear. In smaller areas, like behind the ear, sideburns, all that good stuff, 
You can go ahead and use your trimmer for that to feel more comfortable. Trying to put my elbow up for a minute. All right, so that's what that shape is looking like. All right, so it's got a nice flare out. And again, we can go ahead and start working out those with your corner blending. Now this side. So let's just say, um, you know, I don't want to go ahead and use my big clipper. I just want to use my trimmer. You can totally do that on the sides. You go straight, and then remember, diagonal section down. I'm starting to blend through. I use my middle finger for some balance behind the ear. You never want to push back too much and go into the ear too much. Same thing with hair lines. Any type of perimeter line, you never want to push in too much. But in order to keep it classic, if you do classic look, you don't necessarily have to take the sideburn all the way down. If you want to push it and make it super modern, taper out that sideburn. If you taper out the sideburn, it's going to last longer for sure. All right. I'll do one tapered and one not so you can see the difference of what it would look like. Point five. Okay. Okay, now let's do the top and start to connect. You can have the comments here and there. this and start to connect that top so we can really play with um, some of that product. So long top. We got to connect it all the way through. We're going to connect the back, disconnect on the front side so that it can fall down, be a brush back, brush back, have it feel like it connects through, but I want some flair, have it fun, fall over. So I'm going to go ahead and spray it back down. Remember even porosity when you're working with cleaner sections. And now I'm gonna spray that grooming spray. So grooming spray also helps retain moisture so that way you don't have to keep spraying the hair down with the water bottle. Okay, so I'm going to section directly down into the middle. Like so. And then I notice that my roots are not damp. So from further away, one, two, three, let it set. If I go too close, I'm not going to get even all the way across that. So spray from a little further away. My first thing I want to do is connect the back. Small sections, bring it down. 
again, I want to create weight there. So I want to create weight. Our comb is over. See that? I drop my shoulder so you guys can see. Not doing a straight cut. I'm doing small little point cutting. Directing it down. Next section, bring it back. Remember, we're brushing back. Follow your previous guide. And what we're going to do is we're going to over direct it the entire way and then we're going to pick it up 90 degrees and just follow the head shape and give it a little bit of layering and movement. Alright, bring that all down. What happens when you over direct this way is you're creating short, shortest to longest. You're guiding it in the direction that you're going to be holding it, blow drying it. Spray again. Now, let's say in the barbershop, client comes in often enough where you're just doing a cleanup. You don't have to, you don't have to cut the top every single time. But they have product in their hair, and you can't really get through it. You're not going to wash them out. They're just in for that cleanup. You want to style their hair and show them what the product that you're using. Well, you can go ahead and use that grooming spray. Break up what they have. Use a little bit of water, a little bit of grooming spray. And that should break it down for you enough to kind of restyle their hair with the products of your choice. You can see my sections are getting thinner and thinner. And they're going to be pretty long in the front. Two more sections coming from the front. What I like about brush backs is depending on how much length you're leaving, it's super versatile. You can wear it going forward, over to the side. Put it all back, create a ton of movement with it. I'm choosing to go a little bit more rounder than square on this one. Just because I'm inspired right now by Saved by the Bell. Same thing, everything coming back. Now this is setting up your foundation for your length. That doesn't mean that internally we have no work to do. Let's bring all this back. You should end up with something that looks a little bowly. All 
All right, so now that we have all that brush back, I'm going to pick it up, give it lots of movement. It's going to change the actual shape of it, okay? So I'm going to start off with this corner here, right under, like kind of on and under that frontal ridge. I'm going to bring it over. There's my guide underneath from the first section that we cut out of the entire haircut becomes my guide to help me blend going backwards. Mind you, I'm not going to cut too much out of here, so you have a little disconnect there, but I am going to start to blend that side. So when I brush it back, it has hair that just kind of flows. And I'm bringing it back with me. Now, depending on how much length I want to leave in the front, I can either leave that much or I can blend it in. I'm going to leave it a little bit longer. Oops, sorry guys. My next section now becomes my guide underneath. Now I'm bringing up big shark teeth cut into it. Bring all of the sections together. Make sure you didn't miss anything. There we go, that little front piece. So you can start to see as you brush it back, you're gonna have a little bit of that flow together now. It's not just gonna be so bushy. Next section. I've already got that grooming spray keeping me pretty even porosity. Bring it up. There's my guide right there. There's my guide, follow it all the way through. All right. You can see that flows nicely together. Whereas if this side here, right, you got that nice little flow. It's going to look awesome brushed back. Whereas if that side's still just like, woo, there's a lot of hair there. So let's do this. As you can tell, I use my grooming spray throughout the entire haircut. So it's an extremely easy sell for people. Um, I mean, the only, the only times I don't is if they actually have already bought it. And it's not necessarily because all my clients even need it. It's just because of the way that the scent is. It just takes over the whole room. Like usually where I am located smells like Subway. And when you walk in, it no longer does. And that's thanks to statement. Okay, bring everything up. Remember, because I bring every section up together, no matter where I am in the haircut, I can bring it all and it should all have consistency. And if you're feeling like this is getting too long here, it should be a corner. You can take that off and round it out a little bit more. If you don't round it out, you can do fun little styles, little DAs with it, things like that. So you can see the difference from what we've cut so far. Right? It's got like a little disconnect, but everything blends through, whereas if that's really long on one side. So now that I'm back towards the middle, I'm going to lift this section up and start exactly where I did on the other side, on this side. If I chose to go all the way through, I'd end up reaching over and I'd probably find a little inconsistency there. Okay, so my guide from first thing that we've cut that's underneath my hand to build that weight in the corners. Use the front length at your own discretion. And I'm actually going to style this out today with, I think we're going to do the, just for fun, let's play with the spray powder. 
and maybe see what happens. We'll do the spray powder at the roots, lift it up. That's going to give it a little bit more of extreme matte hold on the root. So let's say someone gets a little, yes, this is it. So once you get someone gets a little bit greasy, that's also going to help suck up the grease. So that way they have root volume all throughout the day, which is a very cool thing that I've experienced. Um, and then maybe we'll finish it off with a little bit of Nomad's classic pomade because I really want you guys to see how pomade is changing. It's got a stronghold. You can cocktail it. Uh, it's just, it's very, very nice. Then we'll finish it off with a little hairspray. But just so that you can see what a little bit more of like a modern, modernized brush back haircut can do with a little bit of pomade. So now that middle section, get to wherever you're comfortable with it. Whoop. Hey, she wanted to come say hi. Uh, wherever you're comfortable, if, if whether it's this side or that side, I'm more comfortable going backward. So, that middle section now, I'm going to pull everything up, find where my pieces are, cut it, bring it all the way to the back. You can use most of our pucks wet or dry, by the way. So let's say if someone wanted more of a little bit of like a wet, tousled look, you can use that classic pomade while it's a little damp. You never want wet, wet because it's going to dilute the product, but damp is okay. So now I see there's a little bit of ledge in the back. I'm going to take those back pieces, lift it up. I should see my corners. Cut them through. And it just takes the weight off of the crown and on top of that occipital bone. All right, how's that shape looking so far? So weird being virtual and not getting like, uh, you know, kind of like connecting to the audience a little bit. Uh, try to make it as connected as we possibly could. Act like you guys are right in front of me. So right now I'm just going in and adding my own flavor, making sure it's exactly how I want it, blending wise. And again, this is my foundation. I have my grooming spray in there. I'm going to blow dry, put the powder in, spray powder. And then once I'm styled, that's when I make my client want to come back. That's when I teach them like, oh, exactly how I did it, why I did it, what I chose to do. But also, it's going to do my best detailing work when it's already styled and up and I can see what needs to be finished or if there's any inconsistencies. Remember, barbering is all about that detail work. Whereas if I feel like with longer lengths, it's all about that movement, that texture. But with barbering, I mean, that transition from light to dark, that has to grow out very well. You want to make sure that that blend is well, that it's good, that it flows. Take the weight out of that top. All right, we're almost ready. All right, let's do it. So remember, we've got grooming spray all throughout this haircut on the roots, mid shaft ends. So no more need for grooming spray. I'm going to go in, blow dry. I'm actually going to make this really tight because I'll, uh, I'll end up knocking it off. Let's see if we can get this nice and tight. There we go. So because that grooming spray is all over that root, I'm going to start at the roots first. I don't want to over dry the hair. A lot of times we sit on one part and we just kind of keep blow drying, blow drying. What happens when you over dry is you dry out that hair. And you also can burn that 
product off. So you want to make sure that it stays nice. If you want that root lift in the front, I recommend blow drying the hair all down in the opposite direction. Especially when you're brushing it back, blow drying the root down is going to help you get that volume. And help you get the root easier as well. Just like the last time we were driving the show, seeing if there's any inconsistencies, I'm not going too hard with the brush. I want the hair to kind of fall where it naturally wants to go. One thing that I love about um, I think the type of looks that I create is following the look of the fact that they're livable. You can get really structured, like, you know, and then you can make things really livable, depending on what it is that you're going to be putting in. Now, this is laying like so flat. So I'm going to give it a lot of movement real quick. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and break apart all of that hair. Let's get it real quick, too. Everything that's fallen down, I want to break apart. So I'm not going to do any type of um like guiding the comb where i didn't guide it before i'm brushing it back i'm not going to brush it forward what i'm doing is i'm going in and putting a couple short pieces in throughout so that i can get movement how to stand up break it up without having to slide cut Oh yeah, this piece is heavy, so I'm gonna bring it forward and then comb that back. Same thing here. The hair looks like it naturally wants to almost part right there, which I think is kind of cool, so I'm going to let it.
try again there. Does anyone have like certain favorite styles that they want to learn more about? So I'm going through with these blending shears and I'm just taking the weight. Remember what we talked about with that transition from light to dark that also translates as you're going through your fade. Like not only am I creating movement by utilizing my shear, but I'm going ahead and I'm now on the sides, allowing some of that light to kind of escape into the depth of the hair without taking the length. If I go back in with like a number two, now I'm taking it shorter rather than letting the light in. So using a nice blending shear allows you to be able to let some of that light in where it's really dense. And it should be dense because that is what we created. We created something into dark or nothing. I have a nice little shape that we have here looking good. But you can see like even a little bit with that taper from that side compared to this side where we didn't taper, it just gives you two completely different looks. I like the taper side better. You can see this little trick right here. I'm taking it and I'm working my way up. Blend some of that hair that's hanging over. All right, let's get into the fun part. I definitely like the taper side. I don't know if it's just me. Everyone's style is different, but it just looks a little cleaner. And it's not even like a really, it's not like a skin taper. It's just really light. So... We are fresh. Let's get all of this hair out of there. Shake it up. Let his hair go natural in the way that it wants to live. This is what I would actually do. I wouldn't take my plants out and do that, but I'd have him shake it up or, you know, he, she, they, I'd let him get in there, shake it up for me so I can see where it wants to fall. I love that this, everything's nerd. I love that this has like that length going to it. This can brush back a little bit more. So have some fun. Shake up your dry wax spray, okay? And why we call it a spray is because it's got a pump. So two different products, people will be like, oh, well, isn't it just this in this? And I say, no, this is a root lift. This is gonna give you extreme matte root lift, suck up oil. This is gonna give you texture, flow. It's a dry wax, it's gonna act a little waxy. This is meant, I think, for more styling. This is meant to kind of set your style in. So start it, I go into the root. So I would tell my client, hey, like, um, if you have trouble getting it on your root, put it in your hand and then grab it and then stick it on your root. But nobody should really have trouble on their own. I mean, it is a pump. So go ahead, pump it. Let's see if you guys can see it from this side. And you can see it's not like a ton, it's very fine. Break that root up again. Until it's already standing up. Go in the back. Anywhere where you think it's gonna lay flat and you need a little bit of more of that mm -hmm. gritty. Oh. Nice, so you can see what it does. Brings it all the way up. It's a very cool product. This one was um, created by Sophie Stagold. Can I lift it? Put it on all the roots. Someone asked me recently, um, well, what happens if you put it all throughout the hair? If you put it all over, you're going to get massive volume. Right? So be careful with how much and where you're putting it. I wouldn't just put it, I mean, not that I wouldn't, you could try it, but I wouldn't just kind of spray it on the head. I think that's more so what this one is for, the dry wax, being able to like sprinkle it on like so, okay? You want to really be able to get this on the root. That is why that pump is there. 
see anything in the back? You see all that texture that you're getting, you know, just with that product alone. So now that that's set in, I kind of just scrunch it in, make sure it's everywhere I need it to be. Now let's go in. So you know what? Let's go in with the fiber pine. I changed my mind from the classic to the fiber. We'll stick with the staple collection. All right, so I'll open this guy up. It's a brand new one. What I like about this is that it's got like elastic fibers in there. So smells so good. She's got like citrus, peppermint, but you can get it in your hands. And then I feel like this kind of creates tiny little fibers. You're not going to see like total strings of things, but you're going to see little fibers. You can either like get it on the head this way or go ahead and put it on the sides first. Remember, we're brushed back. And if you put anything that's going to have this type of shine, you can see it on my hands. Right? It's like very clear, very jelly like in a sense. Um, it, you can feel the elasticity in it. So I'm going to go ahead. You're not going to put it right in the front. You're going to teach your clients never to put it right in the front because all of that product that's kind of in the curve of your palm is going to go right there, and it's not cool. So we want to be able to put it all on the sides first. And remember, I'm not like, I'm not going really hard with it. I'm just doing enough to kind of set it on that cuticle, bring it up. This is going to give me like separated texture. It's going to have good hold. Messy texture. And what's cool is that it's flexible enough for me to be able to brush it back. So I've got that volume in there. Calm it all down. Find where it wants to separate. A big fan of like pushing some boundaries. Let's see what we can get. I'm not using my own video as a mirror. I'm going to finish with the hairspray. Remember, find your base coat, which could be your grooming spray. Or if you didn't choose to use a grooming spray and you just used that powder as a root lift, that's totally cool. Find the product that you're going to use and then finish it off with the hairspray. The hairspray is never going to feel like it's too much. Now something a little cool, tousled, but yet brushed back. All right, we're going to go in with the hairspray as a finisher. best way to get to know this product line is to work on mannequins, friends, clients that have really good hair and try things, try styling and try and making up little concoctions. Like I said, that curly hair girl from over the weekend. Um, I mean, she had like curls when like straight out like this and just curls, very triangular. And um, I did not want her curls to frizz out. And so using it with the beard oil, mixed with the grooming spray was super fun, super cool. And she was like, used beard oil on my hair, you know, and it, just, it works so, so well. So play around with all of these products that we have. They're meant to be cocktailed, 
They're meant to be more session work. They're meant to bridge the gap from barbering into cosmetology and to really kind of bring something new and fresh and modern to the table. All right, so it's my idea of a brush back. Now, since my client, this was a, a female model, um, so because she had more female features, I left it longer. If somebody came in and they were a lot more masculine, I would have cut the top, gave it a little bit more of like that square pump. So always remember that your client's face structure, what you want to say about them is going to have a big impact on how you're going to elevate their spirit. My statement is to elevate your spirit and purify your style. I'm DG Cuts. This is the look we went for with the brush back today. And if you follow me, I'm going to kind of perfect these guys out a little bit, post them up on my story. But if anyone has any questions, now would be the time uh, we can answer anything. And just to kind of recap, I used a ton of grooming spray on both my models. So two completely different looks. But a ton of grooming spray on both of them. Was able to blow dry style effortlessly. We did a lot of texture on here, much more smooth look. We used the fiber plumbing. Uh, we used the spray wax dust, which is all for volume and just awesome. And what's cool is like, I'm gonna mess this up right now. Uh, it's got a great look. So I'll be able to play around with this and have some fun with it. And also, if you use the hairspray and then it sets, you can also rework it. You don't have to like set it in stone. It is very flexible. So these are the two looks that we went with. And fun times. And this is a great, uh, great little introduction to what we do. So thank you so much, Statement, for having me and being able to explain the products and some of these haircuts. And you can take your away, Susie. Thank you, thank so, you much, so much, DG. Really cool looks. Thank you so much for all your knowledge, for sharing with us all your knowledge and your wisdom. Um, really cool to have you here. Um, so this is all. Thank you very much for joining us in this um, class, barbershop class. If you want to know more about um, barbering and statement products, follow DG Cuts on IG uh, at DG Cuts. Also a statement grooming. And for more, more education for statement, please visit our website on statementgrooming.com. Also, we have a next class next month on August 16th with Sac Ignacio. So we are looking forward to see you guys there. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye, thank you. Bye, DG. Thank you Bye. so much. See you later. Bye.